everybody welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be a little bit different than some things I've done I was inspired by my friend and fellow youtuber Tyler Ruggie who filmed a video about his unpopular uh, pet opinions and I was kind of inspired to do the exact same thing so that is what we are going to be doing today also first of all I would like to apologize if the animals in the back are making a uh, noise but they're just having fun playing so I'm gonna let them keep doing that anyways back to the video so yeah today we're gonna be talking about some of my unpopular or like controversial opinions when it comes to pets and pet care I'm sure a lot of you guys know that in the animal world there are a lot of different opinions there's a lot of controversial things lots of stuff like that so we're gonna be diving into that today now before we go and get too far into the video, I do like to make little disclaimers that everything I say in this video is strictly my opinion and I'm not the kind of person who thinks that my opinion or my way is the only right way. I think that when it comes to things such as pet care, there are so many ways to do things, there are so many different opinions and that doesn't make one right or wrong. It's just different and that is okay. So if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, that is perfectly fine. Please just be respectful. Feel free to leave your opinions down in the comments below. Uh, but again, like I said, please just be respectful. Be respectful to other people who share different opinions from you. No need to be mean to people. So with all that said, I guess we can just go ahead and get started with the video. So now my first controversial or unpopular opinion is that cohabbing reptiles isn't always a bad thing. Now this might seem weird to people. I don't really cohab many of my animals, but with that said, I don't think cohabbing is always a bad thing even with some animals who are typically considered solitary so let's dive into that a little bit more so if you're involved in the pet community or the reptile community you probably know that most reptiles are considered to be solitary and that they do better when kept alone for example bearded dragons ball pythons leopard geckos all of those common animals that are often kept as pets are typically considered to be solitary animals and that it is best to keep them alone. As stated, I don't always think cohabbing is a bad thing. Now, however, it really does depend on the animal and the situation and the person who's taking care of it and what their knowledge is. Because cohabbing in most cases, for example, if someone wants to keep two bearded dragons together, usually doesn't end well. If someone keeps two ball pythons together, probably isn't great for them. Now, however, I don't think it is that black and white. There are some certain reptiles that actually do pretty well in groups. For example, uh, viper geckos are typically kept communally and they do fine like that. A lot of other micro geckos are often kept communally, things like that. But even when it comes to animals like chameleons that are typically considered solitary, I don't always think that cohabbing them is a bad thing. However, I don't think it's something that most people should do. So the reason I'm saying this is basically just because if we look at these animals that we're keeping out in the wild in nature and look at their social structure, even the ones we consider to be solitary do have some sort of social structure. They communicate with each other. For example, chameleons. Chameleons are typically a solitary animal. They like to live alone in captivity. We always recommend keeping them alone. I would say that as well. However, out in the wild, they do actually have some social structure. They do communicate with each other. They frequently come across each other and that is just a part of their natural life. However, the reason why I don't think that this is always great in captivity is because we simply cannot provide them with enough space to exist with each other in a natural way. Because in the wild, yes, they do see each other. Yes, they do run into each other, but they have limitless space to escape from one another, move away, communicate, do whatever they wanna do. In captivity, we are limited with that because we only have so much space we can give them. So for most people, I would not recommend keeping your solitary animals with another one of their species. However, I think that it can be done if you are going through the efforts of providing like a massive enclosure and you know what to watch for. And I think that it honestly, even in some ways can be somewhat enriching to them to be able to have that social structure 
as long as they also have the means to escape the other animal, get away, spend some time on their own, and things like that. This is why we often see zoos successfully cohabbing certain reptiles that we can't normally cohab in uh, when we keep them as pets. And that's typically just because a zoo can provide them with a much, much, much larger space so they can actually successfully have a social structure amongst these reptiles. That one was really long, um, but yeah, I'm just gonna leave it there. Basically, I don't always think cohabbing reptiles is a bad thing, but there's a lot that goes into it and a lot of you need to consider. So for most people, probably shouldn't cohab your reptiles, especially something like chameleon or bearded dragons, but I think it can be possible in certain situations and sometimes even beneficial to the animal's mental... Yeah, their brain. We'll just go with that. My second unpopular opinion is that raw diets are best for dogs and cats. Now, a lot of people agree with this and a lot of people disagree with this. Both, again, are totally fine. It's okay to disagree with me, that is all right. I personally just think that a raw diet is the absolute best thing that you can feed your dog or cat. I think that it is just the most natural to them. It makes the most sense. It doesn't really make sense to me that with every other animal we keep, like our reptiles and stuff, we feed them what they are naturally meant to eat like insects and we know not to feed them like dried insects because those aren't as nutritionally beneficial as live insects yet with our dogs and cats uh, we feed them things like kibble that they would never normally eat <laughs> It's not what they're meant to eat. Their teeth aren't properly designed to eat kibble. Their digestive tract isn't properly designed to digest it, especially with cats. Oh my god. Dogs, I get it. It can work. And I'm not saying that all kibble is bad. I think that there are some great commercial foods out there as well, so I'm not saying that it's like the worst thing ever. I just think raw is better. But cats, especially, are not meant to design kibble in the slightest, and they actually do have quite the difficult time with it, which is why we see so many cats with dental issues and urinary issues and kidney issues and things like that, all sorts of things. Constipation, all of that can be linked to diet. Cats are obligate carnivores. So when you're feeding your cat kibble, which cannot just be 100% pure meat, there has to be some sort of carb in there to hold it together. So whether that is corn or wheat or peas or whatever it is, lentils, your cat can't digest that. They literally just can't. Cats are obligate carnivores. Just remember that. So yes, my unpopular opinion there is that raw diets are best for dogs and cats. My next unpopular opinion is one about snakes. And my opinion is that things like snake racks and tub setups aren't always bad. And in fact, I think they can work really well. Now I'm going to go ahead and say it, I'm not a huge fan personally of breeder style racks. So like a ball python rack that's relatively small, it doesn't really have anything in it. Personally, I'm not a fan of that method of snake keeping. Again, my opinion doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means I don't personally like it. However, I think a snake rack can work great as long as it is properly sized and if you're setting it up properly. So if you have ball pythons, I think it's beneficial to get a relatively large rack that gives them lots of space to move around. And then you can fill that enclosure with hides and cork and plants and whatever you wanna put in there basically. Uh, yeah, I don't really understand people who are firmly against bin cages or rack cages or even tanks because there are two sides of the argument. I don't really understand people who are against really any of that just because, I don't know, to me, every single one of those methods can work just fine as long as you're setting it up correctly because I can take a tub that's in a rack and I can take a glass tank and I can set them up the exact same way. Just because one is a rack and one is a tank doesn't really make one better to me. And in fact, they do serve different purposes, honestly, because things like racks do hold humidity better than a glass tank would. So there's a lot of things to consider, but just, you know, everything put together, uh, I think that racks and tubs and everything can work just fine for snakes and I don't really understand the hate around them and the negative um, association around them because you can set it up however you want. Okay, so this next opinion might get some people a little bit upset, but again, I do just want to say this is strictly my opinion. I'm not saying that my opinion is the only right opinion. It is fine to disagree with me. That is okay. 
I'm not hating on anyone. Do whatever you want. But my opinion is that birds really should not be pets for most people in most cases. I don't know why, I just think that birds in captivity are really overlooked and not treated the way that they should be. And this is like all birds, I'm not just saying parrots or just like tiny birds like finches. This is really kind of all birds to me, but even, I don't know, I just don't really like the way birds are often kept in captivity. I feel like, yes, you can, I'm not saying birds should never be in captivity, that's not what I'm saying. I just think that most people, I don't know, do it in a way I don't really like. I feel like birds need so much more room than we give them as pet owners. I feel like they're way smarter than we even realize and I don't know, I just feel like most birds don't live great lives in captivity. For example, I really, really want a canary one day, or a group of canaries, honestly. I want a group of canaries someday. Uh, not anytime right now, but at some point in the future, I would really, really like it. But I could not imagine even keeping a single canary, we'll just say one canary, which is a small bird. I cannot imagine keeping a canary in a cage like any less than six feet tall by like four feet wide. I cannot imagine it. I feel like they just need so much more than we give them. So if you think, if that's what I think a canary needs, a parrot needs like so much more. Something like a macaw, like I would never want to own one unless I could give it a whole room. That's just my opinion. Again, I'm not saying that if you keep birds, you're wrong or cruel or anything, because this is strictly something that just is a thought in my mind. And I know there's the big bird community. I'm not hating on you guys. I think that you guys are great. And I know people love their birds and I don't want people to be mad at me because I'm not mad at anyone. I'm just saying what my head thinks, okay? I just think birds need a lot more than we often give them. That's it. Another unpopular opinion. I don't think cats belong outdoors. I think cats should always be inside. I do not agree with outdoor cats. There's a few reasons for it. Cats are really harmful to the environment. At something like billions and billions of mammals and birds are killed every year by cats. Cats are literally an invasive species. They are not meant to live outdoors in our environments, in our ecosystems, and introducing them to that wreaks havoc on the way that the systems are supposed to be because it's affecting our wildlife when they do kill animals. Uh, and people sometimes say, oh my cat doesn't kill anything, don't worry. You don't know that unless you have a camera on your cat and you're watching everything that they do. Most cats will kill things just for fun. It's enrichment for them. You can't blame the cat, that's just what they like to do. But you can blame the owner for letting their cat outside and letting it kill a bunch of wildlife that was not supposed to be killed by that cat. Also, it's just dangerous to the cat. Cats get hit by cars. Outdoor cats get stolen frequently. Outdoor cats have a way shorter lifespan than indoor cats, like a significantly shorter lifespan. Outdoor cats can become prey to things like coyotes, and then that also messes with the ecosystem because if coyotes are finding cats in the city, the coyotes are going to come into the city. And I don't know, they're really messing with the ecosystems and stuff like that. Also, it's annoying to your neighbors. I used to live somewhere where there were so many outdoor cats. They would show up at my windows. Uh, there were like three different cats just in my backyard. They would poop um, and sometimes dogs will eat cat poop and sometimes cat poop can be toxic to dogs. So yeah, it's annoying for your neighbors to deal with. They did not ask to have your cat on their lawn. They did not ask to have their, your cat under their deck. They did not ask to have your cat running across the road in front of your car. One of the reasons I do feel fairly strongly about this is because I used to live in an area where there were so many outdoor cats. I could not drive down my street without seeing a cat and every time I was driving, I had to be super careful that I didn't hit someone's cat and I would find people's cats. People would even let their cats out if they weren't neutered and there were baby cats being born. I would literally be lying in bed at night and I could hear cats breeding in my backyard. So as someone who has first handedly experienced the inconvenience of outdoor cats, please don't do it. And that's not me hating cats because I literally love cats. Missy is somewhere, I don't know where she is, but she's somewhere. I love her more than anything, but outdoor cats, they just shouldn't be a thing. Cats don't belong outside, okay? Keep your cats indoors. 
I'm not gonna go super into this one because I do have an entire video dedicated to it, but it's just that I do not like the adopt don't shop movement. I think that it is harmful to both people and animals. Uh, if you do wanna know more about this, please watch my video on it. I will link it in the description below because I could go on and on and on, which is why I did a whole video dedicated to it. But yeah, um, I don't like the adopt don't shop movement. Like I said, I think it's toxic. I think it's bad for people and for animals. I think it can be harmful. I firmly support reputable breeders of all animals, whether that be dogs, cats, reptiles, birds, fish, anything. I think that reputable breeders are very important. I think that we need them to continue to have healthy animals in the pet trade. I'm just gonna leave it there. I think that reputable breeders are great. I don't like the adopt don't shop movement. If you wanna know more, please feel free to watch my video on that. This next opinion, again, is fairly controversial, and that is that I don't think wild caught animals are always bad. Now, I do think that it should be like a heavily regulated thing. I don't think anyone should just be able to go out and get a wild caught animal just because they want to. However, I think that having wild caught animals are essential to the reptile hobby right now when it comes to um, producing captive babies, when it comes to new bloodlines and things like that. For example, if you are a breeder of a certain animal, let's just say a panther chameleon. In order for you to have new bloodlines, sometimes you will have to get a wild caught chameleon. Having this new animal that was brought in from the wild now helps to keep the bloodlines of the panther chameleons that are being bred pure. It helps introduce new bloodlines. This way, inbreeding is less of an issue, and it just helps to produce more captive babies. For example, people want panther chameleons, and you really often can buy them captive bred or wild caught. However, if people are breeding them and producing more captive babies, even if it took one wild caught animal to do that, that's now a bunch more captive babies which can be bought by people who would maybe otherwise purchase a wild caught one. So yeah, I don't think wild caught animals are always a bad thing, but I do think that it should be regulated so that only places like breeders and zoos and experienced reptile keepers can keep them and not just some random kid who walked into the pet store and saw a cool looking lizard and wanted to buy it. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. I probably could go on even longer than this and come up with some more opinions, but I don't want this video to be super long and rambly because it's probably already long and rambly enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Once again, uh, thank you guys for listening to my opinions and feel free to share your opinions below. Again, I do just wanna point out it is okay to disagree with people. It is okay if you have different opinions. It doesn't make someone right or someone wrong. It's all right. Please be respectful of that and please know having different opinions is all right and that's what makes the world go round. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also be sure to check out all of my social media. It will all be in the description down below. With all of that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.